What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Mojo and thank you so much for clicking on the video. I'm kind of being really quiet right now because I didn't shoot an intro for this video and I'm in a hotel room for work. So thank you so much for watching the video. You'll hang out with Dan for a little bit and actually get some charger work done. So I really hope you guys enjoy the video. We go through the fuel system today and get all the way up into the fuel rails. And then next video, we're gonna get an intake manifold and finishing up the fuel. So you will see towards the end of this, I learn a lot about fittings because there's different o-ring fittings or different um, adapters so you'll see me a lot of these clips i'll actually not have the right fitting so thank you guys so much for watching i don't want to bore you and i'll see you at the end peace okay so we have this one installed and it'll route like this here's the dash six the return we'll hide it underneath and we'll zip tie these of course to that power line and voila just like that so we're going to cut this and it looks like these are going to be sitting at pretty much the same angle too so that's going to look really nice we'll zip tie it a few times we're going to go ahead and cut this and clean it out before we put the fitting on this time so yeah <laughs> let's do it all right let's get it so i got this fuel line cut and i went to go install this fitting and it didn't fit properly um the OD on the the threaded portion for this was way too big to thread into this hose. So it's got this plastic liner, so I'm sure that's the difference here and why it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to do some research. I bought this line off of JEGS, so I'm gonna have to see what JEGS recommends for this fuel line. Hey guys, this is Dan. <laughs> you guys remember him? A few years ago, we did some racing out at, in Mexico. So he bought another car, let's go check it out. All right, Dan. What's the scoop, man? What's up with this? So last time, you got to think, two years ago was the last time that these people saw you. So what's the deal? What happened to your old one? What's the deal with the new one? So I just got sick of the black one. And right. I want something new. I want something faster. Okay. Which I found this one. Uh, it's got all the stuff that, that the black one was done too, but. So it's the same motor, right? Like same it's, motor. Okay, got it. Um, Not the same motor, but the same platform. Yeah. Right. Um, the only thing different with this one is the Camaro diff. Okay. Um, and you said that's a 340 something gear? 345, yeah. 345 gear, Camaro okay. Diff. So to put perspective for you guys, um, my diff on my charger is gonna be a 309. So a little bit of comparison here. Um, <clears throat> stock trans, Okay. It's got, got a trans cooler, um, Rick, Rick Crawford cam. Okay. He does a bunch of G8 shit. So. so is it a custom grind or is it like, it's a common cam that people like to pick yeah, up? Just okay. Common grind. Sweet. Yeah, they have. There's uh, a company that does that with ours too, so I get it. <laughs> they got some pretty cool rotors. I like these wheels a lot. The fitment looks really cool. Yeah, they're they're a little bit curved grass, but. Ah, uh, powder coat them black. Yeah. <laughs> looks pretty cool. Hey, if you guys want to check them out on Instagram. I can't believe I don't have one of these, man. I need to get yeah, one of these. Just hit up somebody that makes them. Like, right? They'll just you off one. It's pretty sick. All right, man. Start it up. All right. Let's check it out. What kind of exhaust does it have? Hooks headers. Hooks headers? Is yeah. it stock from there on or what? No, it's got hooks head plate. Okay, sweet. Sounds really good. Definitely tell us cam. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What do you do? You want to rub it up or do you want to go for a drive? Uh, I'll rub it up a bit. All right. All right. Ugh. All right, guys. So I, I actually drove this earlier, so. For a little bit i didn't go all on it so instead of us turning left here we're gonna go right and go out of town okay i'm gonna buckle up yeah buckle up <laughs> it's uh, about 13 miles per gallon <laughs> are you serious yeah. but it's worth it I thought this was pavement, but it's not. So we're just gonna turn around. We're gonna do a flyby or two. We'll see. Whatever Dan wants to do. He likes to show off his whip, so oh, yeah. 
we'll uh we'll document it. <laughs> Alright man, don't die. So, it's pretty fast. Um, I'm not sure if he got it dynoed, but I, here we go, he's turning around right here. It's pretty fast, man. It was, uh, reminds me a lot of my charger. What, my charger wasn't cammed, but definitely messed. Oh, there we go. I love it. You know, I'm a Mopar guy, but I definitely appreciate cars and some pretty cool cars in my friend group, so. Make sure there's no police. We're in Mexico, by the way. <laughs> Here he is. I think Uber told you to do a burnout. Was it dyno before? No, it's oh, okay. dyno. Okay. I didn't know if it was. I know your old one was. That's why I get confused. Yeah. You guys think Dan should make a YouTube channel? I really want to. Just do it, man. Buy a GoPro and get started. Yeah. So a little bit of an update. My local race shop said that this PTFE line hose, which is the plastic lining on the inside, is completely overkill. And honestly, the fittings are more expensive. They're harder to install and they are just overall, it doesn't make much sense to do the dash six hose that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this. I bought some of the regular stuff, which is like the same style that this is. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out, replace it with uh, some stuff that I bought from that race shop. And it's just pretty much working backwards, but you know, guys, I'm really just here to learn. So let's go ahead and swap it out and go from there so i brought this over to uncle arts and he buttoned this thing up looks great so this is going to be this is like pre prep so it'll be just like that and i'm going to sand this all up paint it and hopefully get this installed okay since i have to remove the dash six line basically everywhere that connects the eight and six line i'm going to remove the nut or bolt whatever is holding it in Pull it all the way out, and then we're gonna have to remove the grommet at the chassis that goes into the cabin. So, right down there, I have to remove that grommet, pull it completely out, replace it. It shouldn't take too long, maybe an hour or so, but let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have the new grommet installed, fuel line set in place here. I'm gonna install this dash 890, or my bad, dash 690, exactly how I did the dash 8 stuff. So, it's pretty simple. Put it on. I will install the fitting and then I'll pull it back tight and do it how I should have done it one time and was not cut it on this side. Uh, just install the hose end, install it onto the fuel sending unit and then pull it tight. So that's gonna be the easiest way to do it. It means I only have to make one cut and it's in the front of the car, which is away from the interior, which could cause a very bad fire. And obviously we don't want that, not yet anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this guys, pretty simple. Um, I already went over it once, but if you want to watch a dedicated video on it, go ahead and look it up. I'm just going to go ahead and install this. Not really a how, how to, but um, yeah, let's go ahead and throw it on. So update, I already cut the dash eight for the supply to go to the bottom of the fuel filter. I have my 150 degree fitting right here to go up around the subframe as best as we can. So let's go ahead and throw this fitting on. And here it is. Gave a little bit of slack, that way I can move it around when I install. I think that'll work. So that's what she's gonna look like. Tucked in there. Sorry for the bad view, but it's pretty dark right there, but looks pretty good. I'm gonna zip tie it to the brake line, that way it doesn't chafe against the brake line or the frame. So even though I don't have my fuel rails and intake manifold installed, I am going to do one side of this fitting so it goes from fuel filter to fuel rail. That should be pretty simple. I'm going to use the access dash 8 hose that I have, which this is the end that I just cut. So I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to try to install that 
Uh, of course, I'm gonna throw a little bit of tape on this first. If you're ordering your AN fittings from Jags, here's a part number for it. And now we have a AN fitting installed. Let's go ahead and throw it on the fuel filter. So just a little piece of advice. These aluminum Jags AN wrenches work amazing, but when you order your fittings, make sure you get every size you need and then order your aluminum wrench because I ordered one considering I have no experience with dash eight, dash six, any AN line at all. So I figured that this was a dash eight line and it worked for all dash eight stuff. That's just not the case. So measure everything you get and then buy aluminum wrenches. These work really well. It's aluminum versus aluminum. So the chances of it marring are not very high. And this is a very soft aluminum, I might add. So as you can see, this fuel line is ran and it'll go about like right here. So that's pretty sick. Um, next thing is clean up a little bit and then we're gonna go to the next step. Okay guys, so unfortunately I got this far and I was going to cut the dash six line and install it, but I realized I didn't have a adapter that goes from dash six to dash six, like a straight, a coupling. And I only have a female dash six line, so I can't mock up my fitting and then cut this to length. So that being said, I have to buy one of those couplings. And on top of that, I don't know if you can see this, but it moves quite a bit. So I think I'm gonna try maybe doubling this up or buying a thicker material later down the road so that it's more sturdy because I really don't like how much this moves. And just like that, we have the fittings we need. They didn't have a male dash six, so I had to get a union dash six and a female dash six straight. So I'm gonna go ahead, install these in the bottom of the fuel pressure regulator. Mock up the hose, mark it, cut it, install it. So since you guys already know how my fuel system is running and how it's going to be ran, I'm not going to bore you guys with how I'm or why I'm doing this. But I have my plug on this side of the regulator. This is actually from my Holly fuel system, my sending units. And they were plugged from factory. So it's really cool that I get to reuse this. It is an O-ring style as well. So, whoa. So I can just thread this bad boy in with a little bit of lube, tighten it down, and then we're good to go. Just like that. I'm not going to have the right fitting for this because I never happen to have the right shit for anything. So I need to buy a male um, dash eight fitting or at least a, a union or a coupling that goes into here, male to male, and then I'll have my female dash eight. So I'm going to have to buy one more fitting for this. And then we finally should be done, you know, should be done. We'll see. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. And like I was in the beginning of the video, I'm here in the hotel kind of being quiet. So, um, yeah, that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next one. I'm going to try to upload a bunch of videos back to back to back. I'm sitting in a hotel room bored. And hopefully this week I get a lot of videos out for you guys. But we get intake manifold, fuel rails and get really really close to starting this thing like you guys actually saw two videos ago intake on we were putting in meth injections so um it sucks i uploaded that too early but anyway uh go ahead and check me out on tiktok mojo gt uh instagram underscore mojo gt underscore and of course check out shop mojo gt.com to get the best merch in the game and um see you guys next time peace